In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence uh, of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Incline our heart and will towards yours. Draw us closer to you. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, um, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here. And um, this um, session, we will have it first. Uh, we'll have some uh, questions and answers um, after lesson 26. Um, maybe it was uh, stirring some uh, things in us. So um, please um, go ahead. Uh, unmute your mic. Um, I think blessing you have a question regarding last lesson and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you, Jean. A um, couple of questions. The first one um, is, is, is a, a, I guess, um, in, in lesson 24, you were you were talking about um, people who resolve to be servants of love. And um, once they set on that track to, to serve the Lord, um, that the, the enemy, the devil puts obstacles in their way to prevent them from um, achieving their objective or achieving God's objective. Um, and um, and in this lesson, you talk about sorry, not this lesson, the last lesson, lesson twenty six. Six. You talked about um, you talked about consolations, and um, you know that we shouldn't set store by consolations, and we shouldn't be disconsolate when we don't get consolations. So um, the, the the question I have really is is this in in terms of consolations we can train our minds and our hearts to accept whatever the lord is sending you know when we go to prayer we can we can train ourselves in that um but in terms of you know we've set out to be servants of love and you know maybe it's god's will that we do or we, we feel inspired to maybe do, to read something, a spiritual work from a, a, a spiritual master, or we feel inspired to embark on a spiritual course, um, or we might be called to do, for example, uh, you know, someone might be called to take part in a life in the spirit seminar where they are, um, you know, helping souls um, uh, achieve salvation or holiness um, you know in those in that instance where there's an action there's an end game um, you know and there's obstacles for example if if you're doing intellectual work i.e trying to learn try to study trying to read and that you have just been it has just been thrown at you so many problems, so many difficulties that you cannot see the wood from the trees. You can't focus on what you're reading. You can't listen, hear what you're, or you're listening to or what's been taught to you. You know, how, how do you, how do you cope with that? Because physically, almost physically, I would say, you can't hear, um, what you're supposed to be receiving. But in terms of prayer and consolation, you can train your heart to accept, okay, I'm here, 
the Lord wants me to be here. I'm just going to be here in obedience and out of love, remain here. But the other one is you're supposed to actually do an action, achieve an objective, and you can't get to the end because of, of obstacles that are being put in your way. So that's one slant of it. And then there's also the slant of, in terms of Lexio Divina. Oh, no, no just, just, my memory is so weak. So just let me, let me just remember the, this question and then please feel free to either bounce back or, or, or go to the following question. Sorry, okay. about that, but I, I will not be able to remember everything. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> so let me reword briefly uh, my way, what you said. So I need to make sure that we understand each other mm -hmm. uh, or we are on the same page. Mm -hmm. You say that, <clears throat> okay, fine, we, as you said, we can train ourselves for prayer, we can deal with the absence of consolations, that's fine. But you say that here, here's a, here is a different case. You say in daily life, mm -hmm. when I am supposed to do certain things, uh, they can be normal life uh, duties, work, or it could be, as you mentioned, also some other spiritual um, endeavors, like, I don't know, studying, reading, um, attending a retreat or a course or, or, or etc. And you say that in this case, I have duties or I am supposed to do certain things, both, but, <clears throat> I have in my personal life difficulties and prob problems. Um, you don't, uh, I'm, I won't ask for details, of course, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, evident. But you say that there are problems that you cannot control. I'm here adding my nuances. And um, you have trials, difficulties, uh, I don't know, maybe don't um, please don't answer but i will just generalize mm -hmm. so it could be work could be neighborhood could be family so i think i summed up more or less uh, all different sorts of activities or can be my group my community my uh, my spiritual group etc you have difficulties sometimes my community where i belong to etc so how can i how do i describe these i describe these difficulties as uh, coming from outside uh, because you might have other difficulties and I'm happy to listen to 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 to, un, to uh, accept uh, different provenance like temptations like uh, violent temptations from the devil something more direct and, and fierce which you don't you don't mention but it might be the case, but it might it should be added also. But I won't speak about that. So I'm talking about like problems that could come from these different sources. No, um, uh, people we live with, uh, family, uh, neighborhood, work colleagues, uh, your community, your your group, prayer group, or whatever. But according to what you say, these difficulties are quite strong to the point that they seem to, uh, to a great extent, be a proper obstacle stopping you from functioning properly. So my way of describing them and categorizing them is I cannot control that. It is thrown at my face. Um, I didn't look, I didn't search for it. It, it just happened and it's there. God knows. We, it can be also health problems. Uh, hopefully it's not at all your case, but it could be also health problems. There are people who have health problems. No, you, you have an illness and then you, you don't know what to do. Your, your, your entire world collapses. No, it's, uh, it, it's also part of the difficulties. But what I would like to underline here is that these difficulties, you don't have a will over them. You don't have control over them. You don't have, you can't, as you said, when I pray, I can say, okay, I train myself, but here I, I can't stop things from happening. So what am I supposed to do? 
of course, Teresa of Avila doesn't, doesn't mention it in the passages we read. We have some answers in other places, and we have also the common, the common teaching on, in, in spiritual life about this. It's a cross. It is a real cross. And it is a powerful cross because you say it's a cross that stops me from being able to function normally, which is, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's something important. Hopefully, hopefully not functioning normally, like the basic things, including work, hopefully. It's, it can diminish a lot our faculties in, at work, no? because you are immensely taken by the problem. No? It's, it's like a worry, it's a problem in the family, it's a, a colleague who is extremely, uh, I don't know, violent or annoying or, or, or nasty uh, at work, you know, or a neighbor, God knows, neighbor who is like transforming your life into hell, that's possible. Now, how do I deal with that? Of course, you don't have control over that, does, would this prevent different questions, different la layers? Would this prevent God's grace to be given to me? No, on the contrary, um, depending on how I react, react to, the, to them, uh, it could be um, a source even of a great um, growth and advance in, in spiritual life. So we need to bear this in mind. So something I can do here, which is, how do I receive it? I don't have control over it. Well, then, fine. So it's a fact. It's in front of me. I have to deal with it. I don't have a choice. It's part of my life, surroundings, uh, people I meet, etc. Of course, we try to avoid in general. If we can avoid, it's better to avoid. There are people who sort of are a bit nagging, no? Uh, either us or people. We can be a little bit nagging, like almost looking after it, no? Um, to avoid, to disappear, in the sense like avoid uh, dealing with this person as much as possible is not a lack of charity. Sometimes it's the act of wisdom to do that so like this person whenever i speak to this person only hell comes from this person so why why do i like say okay but i need to love this person yeah but you can love this person from far you don't mm -hmm. have to love this person from close because mm -hmm. this person is harming you decided to harm you mm -hmm. let me give you an example of saints of course this is not directly to Teresa of Avila, but, there, but you know, the nuns, are, the nuns and, and the teaching uh, of community exists, no? It's, I'm not inventing this. St. Therese of the Child Jesus has cases like that, no? She had a nun, she couldn't deal with this nun. St. Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, one of the greatest saints ever existed in the world, in the life of the church. In her community, she had a nun, she couldn't deal with her. So you remember inside of a monastery of, the, of like hers, you have something called the, called the cloister inside. So it's a square path covered uh, inside. So you have a guy, like a small garden inside and, and you have a square path. So when you come out of one corner of this path, um, and you want to go to the other door of the, in, the, in the front corner, the closest corner to it, she would find the sister coming out of the other, that other close corner. So she would do the complete U journey. So she would go the long journey to reach that close corner to avoid meeting her in the middle of this, this thing. This is St. Therese of the Child Jesus. So I'm talking here about knowing myself, knowing my weakness, knowing that I can't deal with this person. I don't have the means. Knowing oneself is important. So what does she do? She doesn't say, well, God is asking me to love her, so I need to face the, the problem. But you have another solution, to avoid trouble. And very strangely, she says, I am seeking my peace Be because you may continue 
I can't serve the Lord if I am not at peace. But I hear the objections, a very loud objection. What fake peace you are seeking uh, by saying I seek my peace. Which peace? You are avoiding, um, you are avoiding normal, normal problems. You are avoiding to meet your, your sister. How come you call this peace? She says, I know that from this encounter, only trouble can come because I don't have the means to face that. Mm -hmm. So I need to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And I need to find peace because mm -hmm. I can only serve God in peace when I am in peace. Of course, I hear it. It's a fake peace or it's a relative peace. I prefer to say it's a relative peace, but it is a necessary peace. I'll give you another example. It's, it's not the, the case, hopefully, of many people, but it does happen. Sometimes marriages, because of the different temperaments of the, the wife and, 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 and the husband, they reach a point where they, it becomes very aggressive, very violent at home, because the way they are, it, so it becomes hell every day. They fight every day. It does happen. There are, God forbid, but it does happen. What is the wisdom of the church here? Please do continue and deal with your problems. No. When it becomes so acute, the church says separation. Not to divorce, because divorce doesn't exist in our mind. We don't, the concept of divorce doesn't exist in the Catholic Church. But separation means to create a distance in order to have some peace and some sanity, some judgment some calmness in order then maybe after a while maybe to be able to talk so you might find it very odd that the church chooses here in this circumstance when it's becoming really a daily fight daily fight it does happen sometimes unfortunately in some families it's daily fight the church with her wisdom says no please calm down and in order to calm down you go away for some days, could be some months, could be some years. I know people who spend some years even distant, and then they will join back. Some, some growth, some wisdom, some experiences of life allow them to reunite. We are not talking about divorce. We are talking about a good that is important, which is a relative peace in order to do God's work. So fighting every day is not the solution. Facing, allegedly, I have to face and I need to love my neighbor in this circumstance. No, I know what I'm saying could sound very odd, could sound very strange, could shock many people, but that's, that's spiritual life. Spiritual life is not, and discernment in spiritual life doesn't please everybody. And it's not at the level of everybody, but that's a choice. So what do you do here? Peace is very important in order to serve the Lord. Peace is important. Now, let us admit that I tried all the tricks to avoid finding this person and fighting with this person or um, having this annoyance, the source, and try to be far from the source of annoyance. But I still have some annoyance in my head, in my life. Even if the person is a mile away from me, I can't function where I am. So I'm taking this case also, where, where the influence of what is happening is still getting to me and uh, paralyzing my, uh, my mind, my attention, my presence. Of course, it is debilitating. It is diminishing my capacities and faculties. That's, that's, that's for sure. That's the case. Now, what am I, am I supposed to do here? Here, I, don't, I, can't, I did all what I can. I'm avoiding the person. I'm trying to find a relative peace in order to function normally and serve the Lord. Very important that, to find peace, not to fight. Fighting doesn't always help things. So it's better to calm down and then have time to think and reconsider and see things in a different way. I've tried all the tricks. It doesn't work. I'm still stuck. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to work. I'm supposed to be at work, but my mind is not there. I can't function. To a certain extent, to a great extent. Now, what am I supposed to do? 
now the only ha the only thing I, I think I can have, of course, I hope the mental sanity is not threatened because we need to be careful also at this level because the weight of the trial can be so strong that it can destabilize my mental sanity. It's important to seek help, all sorts of help. It can be a spiritual help, but if it is very acute, I need to seek help from somebody who knows what he or she is doing. That's important. It's not because I love God that uh, uh, because I'm Christian and I believe in God that uh, God cannot help me through that. This is science. We are not putting aside the grace of God. We're saying that this is science. Science has its capacity. It has its limitations, but it has its capacity. So I, I shouldn't be losing the plot because of that. So losing my mental balance. So I'm just ex excluding, you know, clear, clear, clearing the way for, for the reason. So say it's not that acute, but it's still acute, but not like destroying me destroying my psychology because sometimes our psychology is weak and sometimes we you can destroy something in you things around you can destroy something in you and that, that's not god's will so i need to protect myself and i need to escape i need to find help so that's 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 god's will that's a necessity i cannot risk losing my mental balance mental balance sometimes can never be recuperated again back again and I know people who lost it and never got it back again, because when you lose it, you don't get it back again. So uh, the advice, the strong advice here is need, seek help of the, uh, of, um, I don't know, so psychologist or, or whatever, a counselor or, uh, or, I'm talking about very acute. Now, I tried all the tricks. Um, I still can cope with it. I'm not losing completely my balance. Um, what am I supposed to do? I think that to a great extent, I still can meditate God's, uh, the Lord's passion. Um, but here it's not, it's not a, just an intellectual endeavor. I am in it. I, 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 it speaks to me in a way, in a stronger way. I would never neglect that activity because I think that the Lord went through terrible sufferings because we needed, we, he knew that we will need him when we will go th be going through the terrible sufferings, similar, similar, uh, similar, smaller, but similar still to his sufferings. And I think that his solitude, his, uh, in his passion, his imprisonment, remember that he's imprisoned uh, the night between Monday, Thursday and, and, and um, uh, Good Friday, he's, he's in prison. He spends the night in prison. So remember that there are plenty, so all sorts of prisons, um, all sorts of sufferings that he's going through. And we cannot not uh, seek closeness in prayer or, or just just gazing at him in these moments uh, you mentioned earlier on uh, because you made it very very concrete very uh, palpable is saying well uh, there is a retreat or um, a training a spiritual uh, teaching or something i think that fits perfectly because paradoxically uh, if the cross is at the center of our life the crucified lord who is victorious over darkness, sufferings, trials, uh, very hard trials. If he is at the center of our life, who suffered, but in the same time who is victorious, I think that we need to consider the fact of uh, 
gazing upon him, gazing at him in, in, in these moments as an immense grace. Uh, because there is a certain similarity then that we find between him and us. We understand each other in silence. We enter in a deeper wisdom, in a deeper knowledge of God. And whoever, who, who, the person who never experienced such trials, what does he or she knows about God? It offers a deeper knowledge of Jesus himself. So I would consider these extreme cases paradoxically still as gems, graces that we shouldn't let uh, go. Uh, I, I, I think that despite the, 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 the acute suffering and difficulty and struggle, I still think that uh, we should never uh, neglect uh, gazing upon him um, and uh, benefiting from his, his presence. Um, a spiritual training or, a, or a spiritual teaching will offer us uh, certainly uh, very useful uh, things, but such uh, encounter between him and us, nothing can buy it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No course, no book, no teaching can buy uh, that encounter. St. Therese of the Child Jesus, um, while, sorry if I quote her often, but because I think she's a, a, an excellent embodiment of, of the spiritual teaching in general. And that she's given by God to us because she's uh, valid for all, all of us as she, she understood herself. Um, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, while she is in the monastery in the early years of her life, her dad uh, goes through um, a very difficult moment. He loses his mind. And um, they even lose him physically. He, he goes for three days, he's lost. He goes out of uh, their house and then they search for him for three days and then they don't find him. They find him in another city at Le Havre in, in France while they are in, uh, I think they were at Lisieux if I'm not wrong. The family, no, I'm not talking about Therese. Therese is at, at Lisieux, of course. So, um, um, T T Therese, her love for her dad uh, was unfathomable. It's immense. Um, and uh, seeing her dad losing uh, his faculties and his capacities being lost, even physically lost, he, he went. Uh, we, 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 couldn't, we couldn't find him. Um, um, uh, hit her uh, immensely, more than you, you can imagine. Hit her immensely. So it destroyed her in a way. Not her completely, don't get me wrong. Or don't get go, don't get her wrong. It, it doesn't destroy her, but it sort of like shatters her. Uh, uh, her. And what is uh, how did she behave? You can't speak. You can't. She said a, a sudden uh, curtain of silence was put, and no, no nobody in the monastery would mention him, his name. And even between themselves, uh, some of them, some of his daughters are already nuns, no? Uh, Mother Agnès, who was Pauline, then uh, uh, Sister Marie, uh, and then Therese. And then they were waiting for Céline to enter after. So she has two of her sisters uh, with her, and the name doesn't happen. They don't mention the name of her father. It's, it's so, so much of a pain connected and, and sort of, uh, you don't know, is it a sort of a shame or what? I don't know uh, how they felt it. So why am I telling, the, telling you this? Because that's a practical case. That's something that paralyzes you completely in the case of Therese. And you can read that in her letters. You can see Therese mentioning that 
sometimes because you know you can't write too much about this and she writes even afterwards about it because you need to really come out of the trial in order to say something about the trial and she says it she said very clearly that was like beyond bearable that that trial so why am i mentioning this because it is a uh, something maybe similar that paralyzes you completely, but you still have to go get on with your life. Uh, and you know, a, a nun's life, a Carmelite nun life is, is like, it's nonstop. From the moment you wake up in the morning till, till uh, you, you go back to sleep, it's nonstop. One thing after the other, one thing after the other, etc. So um, it was certainly very hard, but she said that Contemplating Jesus' face uh, um, the, with the holy, uh, the, not the shroud, but the, the uh, veil, uh, Veronica's veil, you know, when you, you, you could see uh, Jesus' face um, imprinted on, on, on Veronica's veil. She said, by contemplating uh, Jesus' face, having lost completely all beauty, combining this contemplation with the text of Isaiah 53, which describes, amazingly describes the passion of the Lord while being 600, written 600 years maybe before the passion, but describing it. So she said that that became the core of her devotion, the core of her prayer, the core of her way to access God. And she said that the uh, the closed eyes of the Lord um, showed her, her his soul and all the sufferings. Because of course she, you can't describe that. This is only a, a spiritual experience. So from that extreme um, trial and difficulty, paralyzing her to the point that even they weren't talking about him at all in the community. Um, she said it, it became the center, um, uh, G Jesus' passion became the center and the core of, of her life. And strangely, uh, in a way, this is the Therese we have. She accepted this horrendous trial uh, silently, but she never, she didn't drop her spiritual life. She, she, she carried on, but God nourished her by showing her the source of the new food, this solid food, which is um, Isaiah 53, a description of the passion of the Lord and the holy face. This is why her full name actually is Saint Therese, Sister Therese of the child Jesus the holy face there is no end she says because usually we we, tr we transcribe it no Tres of the child jesus and the holy face that's the full one she says there is no end she says the child jesus and the holy face is are the same it's the same jesus the child is in the passion also and vice versa so she says, that's the core of my, my life. It became the core. And I thank the Lord, she says, but this is afterward. I thank the Lord that he allowed me to go through that and, and more. And that, that's one part, but there is more. Uh, we won't talk about it today. Um, I thank God because of uh, all the graces he gave me, but essentially by, by going through that. So you see that. What better than that? You, you, you talk about receiving a teaching here or there or whatever. Okay, fair enough. We need, we need life goes on, but there is more to it uh, through a, a, a powerful uh, trial. And I think that um, all the saints have did in a way or another, we are very different, but we have, um, our journeys are different, but we can have, uh, we are supposed to have this, um, extreme case that sort of seems to 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 block us or shatter us and then uh, out of it will come uh, uh, a new intimacy with the lord a new knowledge of the lord that i think it's impossible to transmit
I think you enter in a silence that that is like it's finished. You you can't talk to others about these things because these are they, they go beyond description. Uh, and of course, what comes after is even less uh, um, uh, less utterable or, or less uh, possible to be to express. So yeah, sorry for the long uh, reply, but um, I don't even know if if what I said is useful, but. Uh, I hope also I laid the different aspects uh, enough, uh, clear enough, especially the importance of not losing the mental health balance. Yeah. So what basically, yeah. basically what you're saying is that when you find yourself in trials, um, you can do what you reasonably can to get out of those difficulties, um, you know, seek the help that you need. Um, but at the same time, you can also use those trials to enter more deeply into the life of God by sharing his suffering and by just, you know, that communion with him because two similar people are having <laughs> the same, yeah. So it's, it's a depth thing of, of deep in the communion. So yeah. it's essentially what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is that whatever I can do, I will do it, I need to do it. Yeah. Uh, avoiding the conflict, escaping from the conflict, uh, searching a, a minimal peace, um, taking care, this is now our language, maybe not in the time of Therese, being careful mm. not to losing the plot completely. Yeah. This is what I can. And even after all that, it's mm. still there completely uh, mm. shattering me. Uh, well, then the, the, the spirit. But I, I needed to, to sort of clear, to clear the way of the other things before, because sometimes it's like, the person is creating the trial. I mean, I, I'm going to meet this person. I'm the one who goes to this person. Why do you go? If do you mm -hmm. know that this person is uh, is uh, is creating hell in your life, mm -hmm. why do you search for this person? Mm -hmm. Leave this person mm -hmm. in peace. Avoid this person. How mm -hmm. can I avoid? It's impossible. This is against God's will, against loving my neighbor. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It's lack of discernment here. Mm -hmm. Avoid this person mm -hmm. because look, a great saint, Saint Therese, I, I, I. God forgive me, I don't know greater sin than her. I'm not talking about the Our Lady and Saint Joseph, I'm talking about her, uh, other mm -hmm. uh, normal saints, no? Yeah. Okay, now, thank you. Do, you're welcome. Second question, Dano, you, you have the... Uh... Um, yeah, in terms of, so we, we you mentioned that um, in terms of we shouldn't um, set store by consolation and we shouldn't be disconsolate if we don't get consolation during prayer of the heart but then you also have the aspect of the next year divina um, which you do need to get something out of when you are practicing it and it you know it almost feels like if you don't get the juices from lectio divina it almost seems pointless to do the lecture divina, and it's very demoralizing so how do we in terms of lectio divina and then prayer of the heart how do we cope with this this situation if we're not getting anything out of the lecture thank you that's uh that's uh, yeah a different question here um let me reword it also my way uh, just to make sure that we're on the same page you said okay the type of prayer which is contemplative prayer this silent prayer like adoration like uh, prayer of the heart uh, Teresa of Avila says we're not supposed to receive or if we don't receive that's fine so, talking the same almost the same uh, having the same meaning but your question here says okay that's that's prayer of the heart but in other types of prayer you mention only Lectio Divina but I would mention a rosary I would mention the mass a divine office other types of prayer because we shouldn't exclude but of course i will answer the question essentially for Alexi Divino. but you let us remember also there are, there are other types of prayer so now for Alexi Divino, you said receive the juices Alexi Divino is yeah I, I i we are not seeking consolations in Alexi Divino. Uh, i hope we never seek consolation what we seek is to discover god's will now, 
as you know, and I have explained it uh, many times uh, outside of this course, uh, but also in this course, uh, when we talked about um, chapter 13, the famous chapter 13 in uh, Ascent of Mount Carmel. Uh, and I said, well, this is in a way practicing actually. Now, what does Teresa of Avila say? She says, what matters is the growth of virtues. So she herself distinguishes clearly the two activities, the prayer of the heart and the necessity to work on the virtues. She didn't say if the working on the virtues or the discovering what we're supposed to do falls inside of prayer of the heart or outside of it, but it's, a, it's an activity. It's, it's something to, that should be done. Second point, she doesn't, the, this seeking the virtues seems to be something accessible to, the, to our will, providing of course, and we know it, the general help of the grace of God is always there. So I might, I am supposed, not I might, I am supposed to access God's will in the sense of lectio or in the sense of growth in virtues. And for me, it's absolutely the same. Through, through the general grace of, of, of God, depending where I am. Remember, we are talking here about beginners. And the first stage in, or the first type of prayer, she says, it's meditation. She never said supernatural intervention of God. A particular help of the grace of God. So we need to accept that it is possible to search for the will of God through simple basic meditation, which means take the text of the Bible. We may take another text of other things. I'm just following Teresa, not following my teaching, following her teaching. So you may you may take a text and search for a virtue and focus on it and work on it. This is possible. You may say, but these are not juices. Yes, but it's still something to, that could be done. Now you will say, but you, Jean, when you teach Lex Divina, you say that God is supposed to talk to us, to, to show us, to say something. Yes, of course, yeah. And I do believe in, in, in that for a person after the second conversion, I do believe, this is me talking here, not Teresa Varela, that the uh, Lexi Divina, which is never explained by or presented by Teresa Varela because she didn't have access to a full Bible in her time in, in Spanish. So we can't ask her for something that she couldn't give. I do believe in our case today that we have access to a Bible that yes, the Lord is willing and desiring to talk to us through Lexi Divina. Now, it is good from time to time to revise our understanding of Lexi Divina. Here, in the case of Teresa of Avila, she seems to define indirectly Lexi Divina by what? Allowing the flowers to grow. And the flowers are the virtues. And the virtues are humility, uh, love, patience, uh, embracing the cross, and, go, and, 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 uh, and it goes on. So what do we expect from Lexi Divina, I think is important from time to time to ask ourselves where I am at, roughly, and what am I expecting more or less from, from the Lord? Because I might be expecting uh, looking at a certain direction and the Lord is working on a different direction, so I don't get what he's saying. Uh, or I, I imagine that I am supposed to receive something and I'm not looking there. So uh, uh, sometimes a, it, 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 it needs revision or widening my expectation without knowing what will come, but widening it. Because sometimes 
we can sort of say, okay, well, then he's not giving me anything in this way. Yeah, but open a little bit. He might want to talk in a different way. Mm. You see? Mm. Like, for instance, you're talking about such a trial, such a difficult thing. You know, we are uh, right now in the uh, celebrating uh, Easter, you know, we are in Easter tides, but does it mean that the cross is not there? The cross is there. So he might very well in texts that are not necessarily talking about the cross, that the talks will, will transpire, the cross will transpire, the, 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 the suffering is there, no? And it can talk to you. I don't see why the Lord wouldn't talk to me uh, through, through it. Um, um uh, you you can take separately you can decide to meditate to the passion of the lord especially as i said if the person is going through difficult uh, difficult uh, trials etc now uh, to go back to your question and to the core of it when we practice like Siddhagina, we are not seeking consolations consolation comes yes because it's in in intrinsic inherent and intrinsic to the communication itself of God to me. But I'm not seeking that. What I'm seeking is to please him, is to discover his will, to grow or to do something that I wasn't doing. It's a type of exploration also, but it's an exploration that very often goes in the, in the direction of, of development, of, of, of change, or maybe things that I'm supposed to do, and he's helping me to, to do them better. No, it doesn't have to be something different. It could be what I'm already doing, but he's just helping me to, 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 do, it, to do it better, to do it his way, not my way. See, this is hence an intervention from him. He's my teacher, you see. So I do believe that what Teresa of Avila says doesn't apply or applies to Lexio, but if it applies to Lexio, Lexio still functions because the, as you call them, the juices of Lexio are indications for virtue. So you can't drop that, you see? You can't say, well, I have no knowledge of what I'm supposed to do. Then we are lost in this case. Uh, when John of the Cross talks about uh, what we are supposed to do, uh, he says, we need to follow the gospel and God's law and reason reason, the gospel, and God's law. It's more or less God's law and, and the, the gospel are the same. So he doesn't really expand on saying, okay, you need to do like Sudivina. He says, you know the answer. He, he, he's almost saying, you know the answer. No, it's like, what do you want? You, you need to love your neighbor. You need to do things. You need to be patient. You need to be humble. You need to be, uh, I don't know, uh, you see? So I still believe that God will talk. But Maybe sometimes we expect him in a, in a place where he wants to talk in, a, in another place. So we are still sort of a little bit in control of the outcome, you see? Thank you, John. You, you're, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, Marty, you had a question? No. No, you didn't have a question. Okay, so I think we will... Uh, we will keep it there. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we, 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 we won't uh, dive again into the uh, Teresa's uh, text, but I hope that with all these explanations, uh, things become more real, more um, spiritual life with these questions. I hope that people who, who are watching uh, feel that, uh, yes, this is, it's real life. Um, I, I do see it some, from time to time in the comments of people uh, that uh, some don't uh, neglect to watch the questions and answers and they discover, um, I would say, gems sometimes uh, because of your questions. Uh, you, you trigger uh, thoughts, you trigger lights and God gives uh, his light and, um, and then things become more, more real, I think than just a, a general teaching of Teresa. So I thank you for, for your questions and for, for uh, your patience and, um, and uh, for your perseverance. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, St. Therese of the Child Jesus um, often comes to our rescue when it's about daily life dealings uh, because she, she 
she never, as I said, and I repeat it uh, already, repeated it tons of times, um, she doesn't seek the consolation. She doesn't seek uh, a, a strange, she wants the common way. And the common way, she says, it's like um, not having extraordinary graces, but having the graces. That they are extraordinary, but not in an extraordinary way, the normal way. Remember when uh, after she died, uh, they announced uh, to the nuns that the, they will start the process of uh, beatification and canonization. One of the nuns said, Sister Therese, what did she do? It's like, you want to canonize one of my sisters. I, I lived with her so many years and then I, I didn't notice anything. <laughs> That's the thing, you see, we expect saints to walk like gliding and then have uh, shiny things there and, and, and perform miracle, miracles while in, in, in the case of Therese, this is the answer. What did she do? Like in the sense of extraordinary, you know, in the sense we read story uh, of saints and they do miracles and they perform miracles and they do various things. But when it comes to Therese of the child of Jesus, no miracles, nothing, just daily life. Of course, there is an extraordinary life, and this is the challenge uh, for people who, who study her, is to miss, uh, to oversee uh, the greatness of such life. Uh, and uh, I thank God that I was uh, trained uh, by Carmelites, the French Carmelites of the south of France, who um, Father Louis, you might know, I mention him sometimes, that he, he always from the beginning sensed with Father Marie Eugène, blessed Father Marie Eugène, sensed that there is a greatness there, but there is a risk of not understanding her properly. Especially in the beginning of last century, she was the sweet, uh, gentle flower of Lisieux, showering uh, roses from above. So, the, you know, the image was a bit too, too sweet, uh, quote unquote. So, he felt there is a great saint behind her and he spent all his life trying to understand that that greatness and seeking the light from whom from john of the cross he said my brothers thought the father louis the carmelite french carmelite he died in 1992 born in 1902 he said i i start, i was studying john of the cross so my my brothers thought that i was just studying John of the Cross. And he said, oh, while I was asking him to explain to me St. Therese, the, the, the end goal was to understand Therese. Why? Because he saw that Therese was a, a gift from God to the church. Unfortunately, now less and less because we're crowded with other saints now. So we, they are like sort of like mm -hmm. pushing each other. But at that time, she had such a, a hurricane of glory in the early 20s, last century. Um, from 1910 on 11 on to 26 to the, the more time of her organization. And after that, even um, she had such a you can't enter a church in, in, in a Catholic church anywhere in the world without seeing a picture or a statue of her. So that's this tells you something about what happened last century. So. Um, but the temptation is to misunderstand or to not understand the depth of, 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 of the race. So they all saw a great saint and had the intuition that there is something there. And what is great in Therese is that she received the, uh, the fullness of John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila in a, in a way that could be imitated, that could be um, emulated, that we, we can live. It's possible. The greatness of the teaching of John of the Cross and Teresa, and Teresa uh, of Avila. And they saw in her, both of them, I think, Blessed Father Maria Jean and Father Louis, they were colleagues, first disciple, Father Louis, and then became colleague. Um, they saw in her like a, a mini Our Lady. I have a text from Father Louis where he, he, he quotes another author, and of course, in uh, Greece, 
that she's like a mini Our Lady offered to uh, the, the modern times. Uh, and uh, I, re I quote here again Father Louis saying that Therese is the most documented saint till today, the most documented saint. Uh, we have details about her of, you can't find in other saints. It's incredible the amount of information that we have about her. And despite all that, she can escape. She, in, we can misunderstand, over, overlook the, the, the real greatness. So I don't know why I'm talking about this. So, yeah, because uh, I quote her often, yeah, because she comes to our rescue. Hmm? Uh, She's patroness of, of, of all the of novitiates in, in, in Carmelite, uh, this cult Carmelite. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. And uh, let us say together, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Sorry, Jean, I had another question. You mentioned in the last lesson um, how, I think it was Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, uh, how she treated suffering or how she sort of bulldozed over them. Uh, you mentioned suffering and a bulldozer. <laughs> Could you just sort of quickly expand? Yeah, the, uh, the um, what I meant is the following. I said that you reach a point through this experience of the cross um, where any trial, any cross is taken in Jesus' cross, embraced, like as Teresa of Avila says, yeah, I embrace the cross, uh, embrace Jesus, embrace the crucified. So anything that happens is like devoured, uh, uh, grounded grinded, um, totally by this movement. So what is this movement? This movement, in fact, is um, starts with the experience of Jesus cross, in the sense that all of us, we, we always have difficulties and trials uh, here and there. So take one, and then put it in the hands of Jesus, put it um, yeah, yeah, like, of course, first you see it as uh, put there in front of you from God's providence. And then, so in a way you say God allows it, at least you can say allow, allows it. And then you say, okay, if God allowed me to go through this difficulty, uh, I embrace Jesus cross and uh, embrace the crucified uh, Lord and I put this uh, this difficulty or trials in front of Jesus I offer it to him I present it to him now I'm not an alone anymore I am in the presence of the Lord and I am interacting so it's not it's not artificial it's something very deep. It's, uh, it's, um, it's even deeper than just m simple prayer because it's, it's real interaction here. And, um, and it's a middle of a suffering. It's a middle of, of what is happening. Now, this opens for us the possibility to experience the power of Jesus on the cross. This is a unique experience. And all of us Christians are invited to have this experience, not to fear the cross, not to fear the suffering. Again, I repeat, we do not look after the suffering. It's like, I'm, I'm not searching for crosses. It's whatever is already present, I take it. I don't search or create a search for suffering or create okay, opportunities of suffering, no. No, I would even prefer to escape from that. But if you can't escape and it is there, you can't escape and it is there. So what do you do? You, you, it is now, it's like you can't escape. It's, 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 it's almost 
it is unavoidable. So what do you do? Is you look at Jesus, you having this difficulty, this trial, you look at Jesus and the two gazes cross each other. And through that, the, there is a mysterious power that comes from Jesus, Holy Spirit, if you want to call it, that comes from Jesus, but it's a, it's a specific way of communication of the Holy Spirit where God shows what he realized on the cross, that he's capable of winning against evil. That's very, that's the key. How the cross, Jesus on the cross shows us how he takes bitterness, you no? Know? When he was thirsty, they uh, presented to him a sponge full of uh, vinegar. We say in French, it's vinegar, no? So it's uh, bitter, it's horrible, no? Pure vinegar in your mouth. Uh, but it was presented in order to sort of alleviate the suffering, no? But after that, when you think and meditate about it, what is it? You, we offer Jesus bitterness, the bitterness and ugliness of our sins. And what did he give us back? Um, salvation, light, love, transformation, purification, forgiveness. The list is long and you know it. So evil is given to him, accepted, transformed by the unique power of God, and this is proper to the cross. The cross has this transformative capacity to take something evil and to give back a higher good. So the cross, this power, this is this unique power of the cross is, is available to us, but we need to experience it. So when can I experience it? Is when I have this difficulty that I bring in. So he helps me and gives me the power. So I am a little bit like him. He gives me, he teaches me how whatever evil I received, he in me can transform it into something good. So I can give back to people something good. So I am the one at the receiving, sorry, I am the one in the practical terms in my daily life who received who was hit by evil and with him in me or in front of me whatever he shows me he gives me he communicates something new to me that i never had before so he gives me the power he transforms he shows me through experience, personal experience, how he can transform something negative into something positive. Now, this is one experience. You add more, 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 more. So now you bulldozer. Any uh, difficulties in daily life, any trials, any uh, even if in your personal consideration of the world or what is evil in the world, the, the evil, the presence of evil, the mystery of evil, as uh, us Christians, Catholics, we would call it, no? the mystery of evil, presence of evil in, in, in the world, in the structure of societies, in, uh, et cetera, it starts now to be seen in a different way under that trans power, uh, transformative power of the cross. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, but this personal experience, and it doesn't make the suffering go away, but in you, it transforms it it, it does to a, to a great extent transform something of course it does because it's not you're not stuck by this suffering by the cause of this suffering uh, you 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 you, you um, the uh, entrance in you and in the world yeah. through you of the power of the cross offers a, a change like for instance no somebody for reason uh, harmed you no mm -hmm. Uh, now, what do you what do you do? You either say, "Okay, I will forgive the person." That's it, or you you bring all that to the cross, to Jesus, the crucified, and you learn from him. I can't say what he will say to you. I don't know it, but he will talk to you. So his power, his communication, the uh, his example, his living presence, 
because the cross in a way transcends time the cross is still there the crucified is still there in a way even though he's risen and it's finished but it's all the moments of Jesus belong to us. So the moment of the cross still is there alive and, and capable of feeding us. So that moment I introduce myself into him and, and something between him and, and me happens, makes me cope by praying, by what I don't know, he will do it, makes me face and cope what I, I received. So the In suffering changes, way. it changes. It's, uh, I don't yeah. think it stays. Uh, something changes what uh, the cause can be still there some exactly extra, exactly but some your, extra suffering some extra suffering your... but it eases something eases and the new experience there is a new experience here of the power of the cross how jesus and by power of the cross i mean the power of jesus on this the can cross. be with small sufferings and big sufferings it doesn't always have to go to this intensity that you talk about no 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 it can be any suffering yeah. any suffering this is why i said they, the, the the saints at this phase of spiritual life which can last some years they bulldoze uh, all all the trials all the difficulties they they like, like gliding over them because of that unique experience to the point as i said uh, earlier on that they might almost seek uh, the, the the suffering because in fact it makes you grow because uh, they know the power that it gives them after knowing yeah because it goes through you it's it's about you also about you are the, you are there so you what you receive he he feeds you he transforms you so you, you feel that you are you are you are growing also spiritually so paradoxically the trial makes you uh, grow the difficulty instead of destroying you or, or putting you putting you down is is lifting you up but it's not the suffering itself so we, this is why we need to avoid this misunderstanding no the, the, the it's not the evil itself it's the power of the cross that lifts me up. Okay, thank you. You're most well. Thank you for asking this uh, fundamental question, and I'll uh, try to add, add it to the to the lesson. Thank you.